Good morning everybody and welcome to the day of the video Darren, how's it going today? Today, look at the weather, it's lovely outside, it's very very sunny, I've got my sunglasses on, I'm not wearing a coat, I'm only wearing a thin t-shirt, um, yeah, I said yesterday that I was going to spend today in bed playing video games, uh, playing Xbox games and stuff, but I'm not, I'm outside, because tomorrow it's going to rain. To be honest, I don't feel well enough to be walking around that. Oh, I feel like I'm being driven into the ground by whatever the hell is on top of me at the moment, this illness thing. And I thought, I'm going to go for a walk, I'm going to see if it makes me feel better. I have no aim or direction, and I don't think, well, I, I stepped outside and I'm like, oh, it's actually, it's kind of bright, I'm going to go in and get my sunglasses. And then I thought, you know what, it's supposed to be raining tomorrow. Let's just head like head to town and do something. <laughs> Which means go and walk around the same shops and stuff. Um, but then like... <sighs> I don't feel for... I, just, I really don't feel great. Like my ears hurt. Like everything is just super loud. And my voice seems like numbed. Um, and I just constantly feel sick. But I haven't been. I don't understand. I don't understand what's going on, man. Oh, but it's, it's a really annoying. I've spent my morning um, doing stuff. I stayed in bed for quite a long time with a headache until I got up and had some painkillers. And then headed uh, to get ready to watch TV and stuff. I've been watching um, House of Cards. I've also done my YouTube videos and all that kind of stuff. Um, but otherwise, not an awful lot. I've been organising to-do lists, <laughs> that's about as much as it gets, and by organising to-do lists I mean picking an app. I've been trying to find a, a good app to use, and I've been around the houses, <laughs> but I think I might have finally found one. I didn't like any do, it's really aggressive, <laughs> it really bugs me, you've got to put like, it's good because it's it, you can put everything you want to do in, and then you can say like, on the day you're going to do it, do this, this, this. But then it makes you do times, and it gives you notifications to say you should have done it by now. And I'm like, get off my back, can you do? Jesus. <laughs> but the final um, nail in its coffin is uh, how ugly the app is. <laughs> it's really ugly. Um, without paying for like the premium themes and stuff. And if you've got an ugly widget, like, I want to have a good widget on my widget screen. And the fact that you've got a hideous one makes me not want you. <laughs> so I got rid of it and swapped it out for uh, Wonderlist is what I'm now currently on, which is not half as hideous. So and it doesn't seem to pester me with notifications saying I should have done this by now. Make me want to throw it out the fucking window. <laughs> but yeah, so that's what I've really been doing. And uh, am I wandering towards town at this precise moment in time? I don't know. I'm just feeling sorry for myself. I just don't know what to do with my life today. That's the problem. That's what I'm going through at the moment. It's not half as warm as it looks either. I'm actually kind of chilly. and I'm not sure how much of that is just like my immune system taking a beating by whatever the hell is rolling me over right now. But positives. Positives, positives, positives. <laughs> I realise the uh, daily vlogs have been bloody boring recently since I've been off ill and stuff. Um, I've finished organising what I believe is going to be the design for the database that I'm going to be installing. I was going to be doing that now, but I thought I'd head off out um, because the weather's nice and tomorrow it looks like it's raining. So, may as well. <sighs> Vitamin D, it's good for you, isn't it? So, I'm trying it on for size. But otherwise, not a whole lot is going on in my life. It's a precise moment in time. <laughs> Apart from being owned by uh, <coughs> assorted illnesses. Um, what have I got to talk about? What what can I talk about here? Well, it looks like I'm heading to town anyway. Uh, I feel underdressed and unprepared. It's been a while since I've been to town for no reason. Like, I normally take my big camera or my laptop or something. I feel like I'm just wasting time. That's my problem. I just can't, you know what I mean? Even though I know that if I was at home, I probably wouldn't really be doing that much because I haven't really been productive at home for a while now. Um, and even if, even though I know that if I brought my laptop, I probably wouldn't do much work. Uh, and even though I know if I'd have brought my big heavy camera, I would have probably taken a few photos 
but that's about it even though I do plan on filming some stuff in town at some point um, I feel like heading in with e none of them I don't have the option to even do anything productive and I feel therefore unproductive Ugh. I'm just like why am I heading to town I've got shit I need to do it at home I know I'm not gonna buy anything <laughs> so why I need to switch off sometimes and ironically the times I find that hardest to do is when I'm ill I find it very easy to switch off otherwise <laughs> just when I'm ill I'm like no I, just, I need to do stuff with my life god slow that is oh no So smart. Oh no, I'm heading home. I'm head, heading home for two reasons. In house, I've started to feel really faint, like I was going to be sick again, again, for the first time. Um, so I'm going to head back. But I saw that coat. I have no intentions of going to town to buy anything today. Just to clarify, but I walked in and saw that coat. God, that's a nice coat. I like it so much. It was uh, 180 pounds, which is code for pricey <laughs> and out of my 200 pound a month spending budget but man it's smart that's what i want now instead of my long big floaty coat i want a smart coat <sighs> god it's nice i even picked up like i tried it on where it where it was and i'm like no i need to get this in the in the changing rooms and have a proper look at it but i didn't want to walk into the changing rooms with a coat which you can just basically put over whatever um, so i picked up a <laughs> a white um a white, um, for a, what's it called? What's his name? Paul Smith uh, t-shirt just to just to see what it looked like with smart clothes as opposed to this cheap shit <laughs> um, pink t-shirt that I'm wearing from H&M um, but man that's nice man that's nice I'm going the weird way home as well because I think it's ever so slightly quicker and less busy like I honestly went really funny in house I'm like, I cannot be sick in house. That's a no-go area. So I'm heading back, having seen something I really want to buy. But yeah, I like that. That was a nice coat. Problem was, sleeves are quite short. Like, the, th the thing is, like, I'm like, I'll put my hands up and say I'm incredibly thin. But I'm also incredibly lanky, and that's not a good combination. Because <coughs> small clothes fit me. Like, they just fit. Everything I wear is small. Like, this hoodie is extra small. This uh, t-shirt's small. My jeans are, have a thin waist, but long leg. But when it comes to getting a coat, I want a long coat that's thin, but I don't want thin arm, like short arms. It's a pain. So I'm essentially gonna have to get one tailored is what I'm gonna have to do. I think I've had enough uh, fresh air and vitamin D for one day. I'm gonna go back home, some soup. <sighs> God. I'm actually quite annoyed because now I know that coat exists and it's not £350. I saw one that I liked, there was a Hugo Boss one, that was 380 I think. Was it on offer? Was it 400 down to 300 Something like that. And I really liked it but simultaneously knew that it was too expensive so I never was interested. But like that's in the, that's in the price range where I am interested. Uh, and like I've just I sent a photo of it to Laura um, and said like isn't it gorgeous basically she says whoa very smart but you couldn't really wear it every day and I'm like fucking could do <laughs> I'd uh that would instantaneously swap out with my current long coat I don't think it goes great with hoodies I'll grant I'll grant you that or it might take some getting used to with hoodies um but I think smart and not smart go quite well together but I also think odd shoes go well together so uh, I don't know I might not be trusted on that opinion but um, yeah, like I reckon the only time I'd ever go back to my long coat, like my current long coat, is if bloody hell, is if um, it was literally slamming it down with rain or absolutely freezing scarf weather outside, and then my long coat would be converted into a winter coat, and then I'd wear that coat either like in place of a hoodie, or you know what I mean? Oh God. It's so nice, 180 pounds, man. And the sleeves are a bit short for 180. If you're spending that much, you want it to be perfect. Is it tolerably perfect? Is my current coat, how short are the arms on my current coat? I think they're probably that length, to be fair. Oh no, don't fall for the coat, Jamie. It's too expensive, for now. 
I promised myself when I graduate, um, my first pay, <laughs> when I graduate and get my first proper sized paycheck, I'm going to buy a, um, a proper suit and a coat. That was my promise to myself, to drop some dollar bills on a proper suit, like a fucking expensive one. <laughs> Well, I'm back. I've had my soup for dinner and I'm about to jump into some software database developing. Um, and I just checked online and that coat that I saw is on offer. £80 off. Which puts it firmly in the range of money that I will be more than happy to drop onto it. I mean, it's worth 200 And I'd pay 200 if I had more money, but I'd pay 100 no, I'd pay 200 if I wasn't <laughs> being such a tight bastard. But I pay one. Oh, fuck you, coat. Why did I even check online? You know what? I just totally lost track of time. Um, <laughs> I'll tell you what I was doing. I tried, I attempted, at least, to attempt to work on that database. However, uh, I've been disconnected from the database again. Just for YOLOs, basically. Uh, which is actually really, really annoying because it keeps happening and I think it's because they're in the middle of nowhere uh, their IP address keeps changing all the time I think and it's driving me mad because I can't do any work without their, if their IP address keeps changing I, this, it's just a shit server no, no servers have changing IP addresses this frequently you know what I mean so I'm going to have to figure out um, well what I'm doing I say what I'm doing, I'm, what I've really been doing is sorting out GitHub and stuff um, so I can work on my laptop. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be writing a piece of software that just keeps analysing the IP address and then if it changes then email me. That's basically what I'm going to do. It's, uh, it's a shit workaround, especially if it happens like once a fucking day, but it's going to have to be done now, isn't it? We've already bought the server and shit. <laughs> In other words, as well, I'm pining over that coat and I'm constant I'm legitimately thinking about it. Do you remember when I bought this my current coat? Do you remember when I bought this? I saw it in the shop and I loved it. I absolutely loved it to bits when I saw it. It was the perfect coat. It was absolutely everything I wanted from a coat. Like it was long, it was flaily so that when you walk quick it flails behind you. And what I did was I saw it, really liked it, and walked away. I walked away from it. And the reason I walked away from it is because it's made by Topman. And Topman is a popular shop. Why am I putting my coat on? You've seen my coat before. Um, Topman is a popular shop. So the reason I walked away was because I didn't want other people to buy it. Because if someone else bought the same coat as me, I would cry. I would die inside. But I went home, and within a couple of days, I was like, no, this is stupid logic, and I went and bought it. So I was like, I've literally looked for a coat of that style for a freaking long time, for literally years. I even bought a coat before it that was, <laughs> because I couldn't find that coat, I bought this coat here, which is a crappy, shorter version of it that's not very good. It's also from Topman. Um, but it was like, a temporary fix for my not being able to find a good coat. Um, get in there, you. So I've wanted that for a long, long time, and then I've de I decided over over Christmas and towards my birthday that I um, that I if I were to get a new coat, I'd want a more formal one. I'd want one that was a much smarter, that isn't quite as like that one's very. It's a it's a military. It's kind of a military coat, um, which is. Like, it's just got, like, shit just all, all over it. Like, it's not, I don't think it's that smart, particularly. Um, I think it's cool, but I don't think it's very smart. And now I've seen this one, and it's playing on my mind, and it's £110, should be 180 But I don't need a coat. I have a coat, and it's going into summer. But that's why it's so cheap, because it's going into summer. And the thing is, like, I'd wear that, I'd still, the, the thing that's killing me is, I know that that coat won't be replaced by it. I know that I'll still use that, this coat every now and again. Um, that coat will essentially be used, well, this will be used for times when you need a coat, if you know what I mean. So, when it's bloody cold, or, like, when it's so cold you need a scarf, you know what I mean? Like, when it's really, really cold, where you need to button up your coat, I'll use that. 
or when it's raining or when it's snowing, when it's just torrential, I'll use that. But in all other scenarios, I'll use that nice one. Oh man, I need, I need it, I need it so much. And now I've seen it, it's gonna kill me. But anyway, I'd lost track of time while I was um, programming and setting up GitHub and stuff. Um, after dinner, I'm gonna be working in Python in order to um, get a nice script running that I can run on uh, Raspberry Pis in order for them to monitor their IP address and then update me in the scenario where it changes. Um, <laughs> so that's what my plan is there. Um, I am going to start cooking now. I need to do sausage and mash. And I'm going to sit and I'm going to consider, strongly, strongly consider um, what I'm going to do about that coat. So I'm really, really thinking about it. Right then, ladies and gentlemen, enough procrastination. Still thinking about that bloody coat, but yeah. Does the server? Yeah, okay, so the internet isn't down. The IP address has changed. Right, it's official. We're going in. We're going in hardcore. We're going to create some Python that will um, uh, just sit and run in the background on the Raspberry Pi. And the idea is that it will just sit and run, and then every, like, hour, I guess... Every hour, every half hour, it will poll the internet and it will go, what's my IP address? Okay, it's this. How does that compare to what I thought the IP address was? Oh, I thought it was this. Then, in that case, uh, thingy. <laughs> if it's changed, then uh, send an email. That's the bit that's the hardest bit. I don't, I can, is there a nice, easy way of sending emails in Python? Well, I'm going to find out, but yeah, the idea is that it will just sit on the Raspberry Pis and it will just sit there. I'll put it on mine as well, it's for you and those. But it sits on the Raspberry Pi and then it will just constantly check and check and check for the IP address. As soon as the IP address changes, it will then email, pick up, email me its IP address. Um, that way I can uh, think it. The reason I'm using Python, because Python's a, I haven't used Python, I used it for about half a term, <laughs> ages ago in first year. Um, the reason I'm using Python is because it's already pre-built onto a Raspberry Pi, so I don't have to piss about getting. Um, uh, I don't have to piss. <laughs> I don't have to piss about what we're trying to say here. Yeah, as like I know Python is on Pies, and I know that you can get them to just run. So as soon as it boots up, it will run the file, and it will just run and run and run in the background. I know I can do that quite easily, um, but I don't know what else is like pre-built onto them. Because I know like Java is, but I don't want to go through... You can get Java on virtual machines and shit, but it's just way too much legwork. I just want a low level. Like, I could do it in C. I could do it in C. But then I don't really want to go about pissing about <laughs> sending emails with C. Because I'm... The battery died on me there. Um, yeah, I don't want to piss about putting C on it because one... Like, I'm not... C is fucking hard. <laughs> As languages go, C is hard. And Raspberry Pis are... It's kind of the thing where I don't want to just fuck up the Raspberry Pi by writing some inefficient, memory-leaky C code. Um, and I'd have to install stuff onto it, and I can't currently access it. So, like, I'd have to test it on mine, and then... Because what I want to do is, essentially, I want to get the latest IP address, and then I'm just going to get it, whack the fucking file straight onto it immediately, um, and then let it run, boot it up, and then it will literally keep going. I don't want to get the latest, and then, like install all the stuff I need to do, then write the program, and then it changes, and then I have to get the latest IP address again, and that'll be irritating. So, quickly do it in Python, because Python's a relatively quick language. Uh, C, well, C, I need to get compilers for. Um, I don't want to... I, could you do a PHP one? I imagine so, but I bet it'd be slightly harder. Uh, I know for a fact... Python can be started as a running script that constantly runs on a thinking machine. So that's what I'm going to do. And I'm now going to do that. I can close off my thingy now. So let's do it. I've also been fiddling around with GitHub. Um, and this is now... I now have a GitHub um, repository. Where I can have, they've got servers and applications and stuff. And then that syncs now across um, not only this computer, but also my laptop. Uh, I was going to use a GitHub server. Or a git, turn my Raspberry Pi into a Git server. Uh, I was going to do that at one point, wasn't I? And then I never got round to it. I think I just stopped because <laughs> no one really, there weren't, it wasn't very like good tutorials and shit online. Uh, and I'm not very good at like creatively doing that kind of stuff myself, to be honest with you.
But I found the solution and that's create the GitHub repository on Google Drive. Game over, ladies and gentlemen. Oh god, I'm back into Python. I forgot how silly the syntax was. Like, Python was built to be a like a learner's programming language. It's kind of a weird one, to be honest with you. It's strangely powerful, but yet strangely weak at the same time. But it's supposed to be, like, pretty close to English, is the idea. Um, so, def, you, you, like, initialize functions with def as in define, then the function name, and then what you pass it. You don't have to tell it what type it is. It will just figure it out itself. Um... To print to screen, you put print and then the thing. But it, there's no like curly. I'm figuring out why like Sublime is giving me syntax errors and stuff. It's because there's no um. <laughs> I'm putting curly brackets over stuff and semicolons at the end. Nope, don't need that. It all works from tabs. <laughs> it's all done by tabs. So if you if you're tabbed in, like here, look. Blur. There we go. If you're tabbed in, then everything that's tabbed is within this, which is. Not very fucking useful. It's not very easy to read when it's like that. Oh dear. So, <laughs> God, I forgot how annoying uh, the syntax was. Right, well, we're going well. We're doing good stuff at the moment. Uh, I've got a loop that's now firing off. It's just doing it ten times at the moment before I put in like a, an infinite loop that literally runs until you force close the program. <laughs> but I am accessing my IP address. Um, and I'm checking to see whether it changes over a certain period of time. I'm now going to... I was it's actually taken me quite a while because I've been trying to figure out the easiest way of getting my IP address. There are several different ways. The easiest way is to download um, a HTTP requests uh, package thing. But I don't want to do that on my Pies, so it doesn't work on my Pies. I can do it on my computer, on Atlas, but I can't do it on the Pies. So I have to keep reverting back to the Pies. When I'm doing stuff that's a bit weird, and I bet when I send the emails, that's going to be a bit weird. Um, I bet you when I do that, it's going to be quite difficult to try and... Uh... I wonder, instead of doing emails, could I have a file? Could I put Google Drive or something on it? And let that do it for me. That sound like a good idea? Or Dropbox? Hmm. Or something like legitimately tiny <laughs> that I'd never use. Oh, I don't know. I don't know, lad. I could... The problem, like... Well, email addresses don't change, do they? That's what I'm thinking. I'm trying to think of the best way of it telling me its IP address has changed. It's got to be an email, is it? We're going to have to see. If, if email is really difficult, then we might have to just install some kind of Dropbox or something onto it to file me, to just send me files over. That might be a good shout, actually. We'll see. But yeah, uh, so I've got to do that now. All I'm going to do now is I'm going to make it right to file, and then I'm going to, I'm going to do emails last. I'm going to make it right to file, and then... Um, Yeah, write to file so it always knows what the mo what the uh, IP address is, and then I'm going to make it do something else as well, which is something in my head, uh, make the loop make more sense. So every 15 minutes instead of every uh, millisecond or freaking clock of the, the CPU. I'm just talking, aren't I? Friggin' nailed it, man. All I need to do now is do the loop that is uh, that just waits for like 15 minutes and then sends the email instead of uh, immediately doing it. And then, like, just spinning like that, taking up loads of processing time. I just want it to stop, stop running, come back in a minute, just uh, tell the processor to leave it alone for a bit. Um, but that's all I need to do. It's sending me emails. So if I press F5 on this now, it'll run and it'll say, Your IP. He says that. I have just, however, broken it <laughs> because I just put a try catch in. So why is my try catch failing? Fixed it. <laughs> I'm getting caught out again by the syntax of the the old tabin malarkey. Right, okay, so if F, uh, Alt, F, R, I, F5. Starting up. IP address not correct. Trying to send email. Sent. It then changes everything it needs to know. So my current IP address is now saved and stored in a file that is um, local to the where it's being run. And everything's all clever. And it contacts my email client, sends myself an email. 
that is identical to the email I've already got because my IP address hasn't actually changed, it's just the same IP address again. And oh my god, it works, ladies and gentlemen. I am a fucking genius. <laughs> I honestly was expecting this to be a lot harder than it was. Um, uh, it doesn't like sleep though, does it? What, what, uh, is it in the time? No, I've got to import it. Bloody imports. Import time, please. Excuse me, can I have time as well? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Dear. But now... I've imported time. That means I wanted to make sure that um, I knew sleep existed, but I didn't know whether sleep actually like turned the program off, as opposed to um, well, not turned it off, but I didn't know whether it just sat and like looped inside itself for ages uh, and then went off. I didn't know whether it like you know what I mean. <laughs> what it actually does is it just says, "Hey processor, I don't want to run anymore." And then the processor comes back to it and says, Oh, are you ready? And it'll be like, No. And so that's good. That, that means the uh, pie isn't being like ruined by infinite loops. Well, it is, because it is an infinite loop, but you know, like. So now I sit and wait, and this bad boy will just sit and sit and sit and wait to email me. And it'll be like, Hey, email. <laughs> there you go. Um, so basically, then, what is this thing? It's a system now. It's a tiny little PHP, uh, Python script. I'm not going to put it on the server tonight. Yet. Well, I haven't got the IP address, so I can't, can I? <laughs> GG. But I could, well, I could put it on Alfie, I guess. Um, but it's a tiny, tiny, tiny little um, Python program that will just sit and run on a server. And it will constantly check its um, address. It will constantly check its web address. It will be like, hey, um, what's my, not my, not its web address, sorry, its IP address. Uh, and it'll be like, hey, what's my IP address? Okay. <laughs> so when it takes the IP address, it will then go, do you match the one I currently know? And then it goes off and checks a file. Well, no, okay. At startup, it will go off and check a file um, somewhere. It will go off and go, hey, what's my, what was my last known IP address? And that will be the last known one. So uh, it'll either be a blank file or it will be... Um, the last known one. <laughs> and then what it will do is it will go into a loop, an infinite loop, and it will say, right, what's my current IP address? Cool. Does it match this IP address? If yes, sweet. Then it finishes the loop, basically. Um, if no, then it will, t it will read the IP address. It will go, right, okay, do I match? I've already said that, haven't I? <laughs> it will go, right, okay, cool. I'm now going to email me. So it goes off into a function that tries to email me, and if it can't email me, then it won't proceed. Um, well, no. Let's go happy path, shall we? IP address doesn't match, it attempts to email me. It successfully emails me, it will then update the um, file to say this was my last known IP address, and then it will just change the uh, variable. We, like, we only read the file once at the startup of the program, um, because in theory the file's only ever used if the pie is turned off. But... Um, yeah, so we just we save in memory what the last known IP address was, and then we get to the end of the loop and we wait for, I'm thinking 15 minutes or an hour. Am I thinking an hour? What are the chances of me needing it more than... I might just go for an hour. <laughs> I, d I don't know. I've done a test now for a minute, and uh, it looks like it's worked. I, I got distracted by talking to you. But yeah, there it is. Worked. Um, sweet. So, um... I'm thinking, I'm trying to figure out how how frequently I need this to thingy. And I, did, I, did I just zoom then? No, almost. So yeah, um, I might get it to wait like 30 minutes. What are the chances of me like going? What are the chances of me going? <laughs> I may as well say an hour, haven't I? What are the chances of me sitting down to do some work and say, right, let's, uh, let's get onto the server. And I go, oh, the IP address doesn't work. And... Like, I have to wait an hour to thingy it. There's no point putting it less than an hour, is there? Like, the chances of me sitting down within the hour it's broken to do it. But then again, let's say half an hour. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, it will sit and it will wait for half an hour and then it will do the whole process again. It will go off and it will check, what is my current IP address? Does it match the one I last knew? No. Okay, do this. <laughs> Else do that. So we'll figure out how many emails it bloody well sends me um, to, to find out um, what's going on with it. Um, I could put it on Alfie now, but um, I think we'll wait to put it onto Alfie because I don't really use Alfie for one, but I'll just put it on as a testing ground. 
uh, while I'm waiting for the IP address of the box in the first place so I can actually put it on the box in the first place if you know what I mean yeah I will test it on my server tomorrow morning um, it is nearly midnight now I've enjoyed this though getting into Python again Python's it's a lot of bad language it's it's pretty slow no it is bad I'm not <laughs> It's a bad language. Not very powerful or optimal. Well, it is it's quite powerful, but it's hideous. It's absolutely hideous to read and write. It's, it's nasty as hell. Um, but yeah, and it's, it's, it's powerful because people have just picked it up and extended, it, the, extended the living hell out of it. Um, it's not designed to be as powerful as it is, if you know what I mean. Like um, C++ is just C extended like mad. But yeah, that's good. So, finish that. I will uh, work on uh, implementing it onto the servers tomorrow. And that means I should never lose contact with the servers again. Because it's bloody annoying when I sit down to do some work and it just doesn't... I just physically can't do it. It drives me up bloody wall. So I'm going to commit this into my GitHub. Uh, I've committed it in like three different times. So it's good. I can always go back into my versions and find out exactly what I used to have. Uh, which is also useful. Um... Yeah, deploy it tomorrow. What's going on tomorrow? Tomorrow apparently it's going to be raining. Uh, I wasn't intending on spending the day in tomorrow, um, but I uh, went out today. But I don't know. It depends on what the weather's like, to be honest with you. All I know is I am considering getting that coat. <sighs> but I think I want the medium one. I think. But I don't know for certain, so I might have to order both. Which I can do, but it means you just got to go through the faff of taking one back, haven't you? Just a pain in the balls. <sighs> But uh, otherwise, apart from implement these things, I will probably just work on uh, actually implementing the database. <laughs> Which is what I wanted to do today, so I got sidetracked by not being able to get onto it in the first place, and slash or being able to do this. Which has been fun, I've enjoyed this evening. I'm just writing a program. Like, I like programming and stuff, it's really good fun, but it's finding something to program. That's the, that's the, like, finding something that's actually relatively interesting to program. Um, that's the thing that that trips me up all the time. It doesn't trip me up, but it's it's hard to program when you've got you can't think of anything to program. It's like writing a book. It's hard to write a book if you can't think of something to write about, you know? Right, I'm gonna get going. Thank you very much for watching today's video, ladies and gentlemen. Um I'll catch you later.